Yo, yo. How was that motorcycle ride down the Oceanside Coast on the bike, dude? Man, you, it was good. I just, ha I feel like I always do that big loop where you hit the like the little strand there and go like on the beach, you know? Surf right away. Yeah, yeah, that's my spot, dude. And then just like, I don't. The sun was just so good. The sunset was just like. I mean, right now it's kind of that orangey, that orangey good vibe. Golden hour, man. Yeah, man, that golden hour. The golden hour is something special out this way. I know, man. People don't understand it. But yeah, that the ride was great, dude. I'm, I bet. Look at the colors right now. It's it's one of those nights where you you absolutely can't see where colors begin and end. Yeah. I, I think my favorite's when it does that like pink with the deep purple thing. Like a clear line. Yeah. Dude, you're chopping a lot of hair off, bro. Not really. Really? A little bit. It on the grew. Sides. Huh? Your well, your hairs on the sides grew out like a bush. No I've been less. taking my vitamins, man. Yeah, you've been doing good, bro. We were talking the other day about cosmetics and stuff like that. It's one of those things where why do we get our hair cut a certain way? Mm -hmm. Why do we even consider wrinkle cream? <laughs> why are we getting our teeth whitened? The nails. Is it because we're insecure? Mm. Is it because, you know, there's um, somebody's telling us we need to do that? Because I wouldn't even know that I needed to do that or wanted to do that unless somebody told me I wanted to. Yeah. That's what I boil it down to. Well, I get that. So that's like with the nail thing, like, you know, I'm a hairstylist, so all these girls always come in with nails done, hair done, everything did, you know? Mm -hmm. But they always, I get a lot of shit because like I always ask them questions about getting a pedicure. I've never had a pedicure my entire life. Hmm. And they always talk, well, they're like, what, you're crazy, you gotta get a pedicure. And I'm like, bro, I don't to know. To you, you mean? Yeah. They're to amazing. You. Every they guy. rub they rub your hands, they massage your fingers and your forearms and your elbows, and they they exfoliate your fingers and your feet. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Every dude like has every dude has said the exact same thing. Like my girlfriend took me, and then like <laughs> I, I my mom loved took it. me when yeah. I got back from overseas, and I'll never forget it. It was the best. Oh man, it was amazing. Somebody just to take care of me for a little bit, you know? Yeah. And that's what it comes down to is like someone else just. I don't know if they enjoy it, but they've made a business out of it and it feels good to be massaged and touched and taken care of and to being groomed. I mean, look at monkeys. They groom each other and they're animals, right? Right. It's, it's an interesting thing. Even if you look at the animal kingdom in itself, it's fucking bizarre. The most beautiful animals have these bright, beautiful manes and all these other things but to make them more attractive, even in their right. own species, dude. Like, what is this? Even flowers do that. Yeah, like what is orchids, this craziness? You know, there's so many. I was, I lost that train of thought, but I'm thinking about, like you mentioned the thing orchids about the, mon the monkeys. And how I they, was thinking they about present the, themselves. Well, that, but sidebar, I was thinking about. You stay like, Hana. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about like the monkey. You Like, you know how, like you let me cut your hair because you like the way I cut your hair. Right. Do you think in monkey kingdom, there's like, no, no, you need to go to Sanchez over there. <laughs> he pulls out the best bugs. <laughs> Robert sucks. He, he, he pulls out the best. Last he pulls out the best bugs. He said, "What are you talking about?" That's like, you know what I'm saying? Like they gotta enjoy it because they're just close to humans. And like I love this shit, man. It's super fun to be able to take care of people and like do all the do all the hairs and stuff. You know, That's but. bitching that you say that, dude. You you. I want to know the the why. I want to get to the nerdy side of everything. You know. That's why I'm like. I like that. We're going to do a series pretty soon that's relative to what we're talking about right now is yeah. what's behind the details of things. The intricate, like really intricate details behind processes. Dude, I was just listening to something about that this morning and it had to do with success huh. and how we label success versus the true success being the journey. And it was just like, like people were like, oh, it, when I get that boat, it's the journey yeah completely and 100 percent relative to the process 100 percent, dude because that it, that in itself is the actual success the bad days the shitty flat tires the you know the broken down cars the cancer the whatever it may be you know that's the that's the part of the process that i feel like people now what we were talking about you know you're like society's so fucked 
when it comes to like the way because social media and like all that stuff the way yeah. people kind of like you know we don't know what's we don't know what's uh up or down from you know i say we i'm not lumping myself or lumping y'all or lumping you or anyone else i say I say the majority of folks, and I think in some essence includes all of us, and I don't even think it's an unfortunate reality. We are impacted by our environment, 1,000% certain of that, and it's how we're conditioned as unique as we believe that we want to think we are. Yeah. But it's okay in the moment to be like, damn, I recognize that I'm going to put this blue shirt on today that's cut just like this because I saw something the other day and I liked what I saw. And I vibe with that in this moment. And that makes me feel good. And maybe I think people want to recognize that shit. And it's weird, dude. There's it's so nothing, weird. It's so weird. Why? Why? But then, you know, I also have those days where I leave with my dad's Hawaiian shirt. This that thing's shit's way tight. too small for me, and it's old, and my dad wore it. And, you know, I had a conversation with my dad in the car today, so I threw the shirt on. How much more unique could I get? But, again, my environment, my dad wore Hawaiian shirts. It's not even me that's wearing a Hawaiian shirt. It's <laughs> like someone who was conditioned to wear Hawaiian shirts to be close to something that his dad did. It's like we're programmed. Dude, we're not making our own decisions. I don't think we have been for a really long time. So when you think of authenticity and you really like break it down, I had this moment not too long ago where I looked in the mirror and I said, you are so inauthentic. You are so fake because I simply, this was at work. I had, had all the mirrors everywhere. You had this moment. Yes. And I'm sitting there thinking, and I'm like, okay, so this old lady walks into my salon and she's like, and I think about this the same way you would go see your grandma. When you go see your grandma, it's a totally different, it's not you and me right now sitting here talking, whatever. It's, oh, grandma, oh my God, I love you. Hi. Who was that fucking guy? Because when you walk out of the street, like, you know, you have that love and that soft side deep down because that's your grandma. But like you walk out on O side and you're walking down PCH, like you're not going to be like, Oh, oh my God, Brandon, hi. It's so right. good to see you. Like whoever Brandon is, but you know what I'm saying? Like, sure, some because random... you've got a witness. Is right. that why? But where is that? Is that your true authentic self when you, for that short period of time, act differently? Because like when it's your boys, you know, like we talk about this all the time too. Like when you're with your boys, it's different from when you're hanging out with your boys and their girls or like you, your girlfriends. When you have for that- For sure. I have different conversations with Dave. Versus my girlfriend versus you versus, you know, Peyton. I have all kinds of different conversations. You got to be different people. Just like what you're saying. Like when you're in front of certain people, you become something else. But is, is that, that authentic? Is it authentic? Within yourself? I'm becoming more, I would like to say this. I'm becoming more authentic every minute that passes. Absolutely. That, that process to become authentic is I was unaware of how much was required to be authentic yeah. because there, and I'm not going to say because of all the static and all this. No, we are bred instinctually to evolve. 100%. And because we were bred to evolve that is, we are the best problem solvers the planet has seen, just short of Mother Nature herself is going to pro solve all of all problems she needs to. She will figure it out. We are the next most like intellectual problem solver the planet's seen. Yeah. We're going to adapt to our surroundings in order to fit in and to succeed, quote unquote, as you were saying before. Yeah. As you were saying earlier. Yeah. So no, we're not our authentic selves, but that's who we are instinctively is to adapt. How many times have you driven through the drive through at some place somewhere and God knows where in the country and they sound like a hillbilly and all of a sudden you start talking like a hillbilly? It happens every time I go see my family and back in the Midwest, I pick up the, like, cause my friends- Within still, minutes. Yeah, within minutes. But there's some things like, I still say dog and coffee and like my friend's dog on me out here and I'm like, dude, just chill. <laughs> because we're adaptation experts. Yeah. 
It's crazy, man. Cause like, when you think about that, like we were talking about my tattoo on my neck and yeah. I told you, I felt like with the Lotus, I felt like I actually blossomed as soon as I got my throat blasted. Like that simple thing of like getting that wild throat blasted tattoo, you know, like everybody sees this, but like at the same time, it was my Lotus, which meant something to me. Word. So like, I felt like it was like two days after I was like, dude, I feel so authentic to myself. Like I was walking around the grocery store and people were like, oh, bro, that's cool. And it's like not even done. And right. I'm like, you know what it is? You're right. I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> because you're putting that out in space, man. The manifesting thing's big. Like I get hung up on this. I got hung up on this the other day. It cost me an argument, which was a really good one. And I grew an entire, I grew a lot. Entitlement. Whew. That's and a big one. The stuff that comes along with manifesting things. Do we think that what are we manifesting? What do we think we deserve? And if we really truly have the power to manifest things with all this stuff going on around us and our our pure authenticity. I just rolled my eyes on camera. You're right. But really though, if we're so powerful like we are to manifest things. Yeah. What are we manifesting? And are these right? And and do we think we deserve what we're asking for? Have we earned that? Or have we just found a, a process that people are talking about that allows us to reach a little deeper into our essence? Yeah. But have we earned that? Oof. Have we earned the right to tap into that? I'm sorry, I'm asking a lot of crazy questions. I just got on one. Like, that's an onion. You could peel that one back all day because... Yeah, oh, man. Where do you think that you stand now with that personally after everything you've been through? Yeah, dude. That's why I'm trying to work it out in conversations like this, me bra. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because I don't have it worked out. I'm I'm my stance right now is is I'm trying to evolve as rapidly as I possibly can. Yeah. I'm so trying to I was just thinking, I didn't mean to cut you off, but please, I was just thinking, we've talked about the anxiety thing in the past many times and like depression and all those things. And we're within line parallel with that manifesting. I had this conversation with myself not too long ago because I was in a kind of low place, just stuff with everything going on, COVID, you know, work and all the yeah, things going on that, that we deal with. Yeah. And I was just thinking, man, you know what, all this negative self-talk I've been having with myself is in, in direct parallel to the, what I'm manifesting now because I've been so self-doubting myself and saying all these negative things and the negative self-talk to myself. And then I'm like, why am I, why would like, I would never talk to my friends like that. So why do we talk to ourselves like that? And I feel like within those depressive thoughts that we have and that pattern that we, where we just get lower and lower and we talk so shitty to ourselves i feel like there's a manifestation within that and it really once you can figure out how to get it's so hard to get out of that pattern but get out of that like depressive thing like you can manifest that happiness and that joy because like i was thinking about it the next day i was like you know what fuck this i'm fed up so the next morning i woke up and i'm like no i'm not gonna be that dude i'm i'm not depressed i'm not angry i'm not I don't feel woe is me. Like, I don't feel these, what people have labels they've casted on me. Like, I don't need to like wear that anymore. Fuck that. I'm waking up today. Today's my day. I'm going to take control. And that starts that manifesting of getting yourself out of that. So I feel like it's this constant loop of manifesting and you, you tracked it, you know, like that's, that's just what crazy to me. Like you see a car you like, Everybody uses this reference. You see a car you like, all of a sudden you see that car everywhere, bro. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm about to logic the fuck out of this. Let's go. Because the word manifestation gets under my skin a little bit. The word work gets under my skin a little bit. When together? The, no, just in general. Okay. The word absolutely doesn't mean yes or no, but everybody uses it as a yes. You know, there's these little things. Yeah. You actually just blew my the mind. Word I absolutely all the, time. <laughs> the word manifest falls into the category of like, just why? Because 
When I think about the things that I do as a business process or a daily process or my personal process on a day-to-day -day basis, look, like, I made it. Yeah. I fucking made it against all odds. I'm doing my shit. People are hiring me often, and I'm doing it. Yeah. Same for you. Did I manifest that? Sure. Slap that tag on it, dude. Yeah. Slap it on. But let me tell you what I've been doing the entire time in my tiny brain. Because I was born this way. Like, what I'm saying is it's not born to do whatever it is that I'm doing. I'm saying, like, when I see or am faced with a challenge or a sense of doubt, it lasts about that long. It's amazing. It lasts that long, just long enough for me to say, fuck, you know what? I'm going to drop it in another gear and plow through this shit because I know I've made it this far and I know I've been through some shit that I know that I guarantee you is way worse as a consequence than this possible thing that I've faced right now. Love that perspective. And so you shut it down. But in that process, I'm working on the shut it down because it does haunt me. It haunts all of us. But at the end of the day, as long as you know the worst of the worst of the worst could have and has like you've witnessed it. <laughs> yeah then what you can do in the end is just be like, I got this. I'm going to go for a run and outthink it or outlogic it. Absolutely. But the business process of Absolutely. manifestation yes, <laughs> and what I just explained is I'm painting my own picture. Yeah. I'm the director. I'm the producer. I get to choose if a gunshot going off on camera four and somebody else flying across the screen on a flying pig on camera two and whether they're going to collide or not, I get to produce the show. Does the gunshot affect me because I have PTSD? I don't know. I get to pick. Yeah. Do I know that pigs fly? Sure. No. Duh. But today they do because I'm painting the picture. Yeah. Am I going to get that job? Man, you know what? I think there's a few probabilities in that situation. And I'm going to paint a dope picture. And if it doesn't work out, that's just going to help me paint another picture. You're constantly creating. It's not even work because work is like, mm, it kind of dumbs it down. We're building, we're creating, we're designing. Equals manifestation. Yeah. That's what we were talking about with the authenticity. Are totally. we ever authentic? No, it's constantly grow. It's the same thing. Every day, every step, yeah. conversation. Sorry. So that <laughs> is my perspective on manifestation is like a piece of art to me and i could be way off base no i really like that perspective a lot it's 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 like designing something epic like your life yeah but it's so critical would you rather smile or would you rather be sad we'll figure out how to smile we're the best problem sol solvers the universe has seen as far as we know yep it's crazy yeah and that's that like go it doesn't matter cut go like I've been, like you said, like I always, I always use that reference in my life. Like, you know what? Let's just use this as an example. Like with relationships, I've already dated this girl. I've already had the same exact breakup. Why is it bothering me now when I've already experienced this and knew I, so then there's the other side of that coin where was I supposed to learn something that I had not? And is that why I'm being presented with this exact same situation? Because I can think of another one just like that in my life and then I think about that where you kind of and that's why I like that in you where you're like no fuck that because I don't do I don't work like that all the time I'll dwell on shit yeah and then I'll pick it apart bro I have like, done that and it's it's not good no it's not good to do that but it's just that pull your head out of your ass that switch and that's why I fuck with you so much because like you have that in you to be like no I've done this and that's, appreciate that's also that military mindset too. That's why I didn't do that. Well, you execute and you move on to what's next, you know? Yeah. Growing up in the South, it's kind of uh, has a lot to do with that. We were talking a little bit about where you were from earlier. Tell me about that. What was it like growing up, man? So I'm originally from Akron, Ohio. Uh, it's the most confused place to grow up. <laughs> like, it, I love Akron with all my heart and soul. Like, everybody there works so hard. Ohio is built straight on, like, Cleveland is just like, work, 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 grind, grind, grind. That's how, like, that's the mindset back there. I've but, experienced that, dude. Cleveland's a hard city. It's the best. I love it. I, I miss it, but, like, never going back. That's for sure. But I grew up in Akron, Ohio. Loved it. Wouldn't change it, man. I had such a 
diverse like it was wild because there was just there's the african-american culture that's very prominent in akron and then there's like that white pride proud boys culture like right around the block so in the sense it almost reminded like when i go around la and you drive around there how you could be in beverly hills and then go a block over and next thing you're in compton and you're like whoa this is crazy akron's the same way it's you got these white old jewish money lots of money neighborhoods country clubs and then you go up the block and there's lebron james house and like really Oh yeah, I grew up around. So he he was the same as St. Mary. I graduated from Coventry, and we were he was always around. So it was just like he was the big thing back then. But yeah, his house was literally a block away from where I lived right before I moved to Chicago from Akron. Wow. But growing up in Akron was tight, man. It was like super hood. Um, but yeah, my mom is where she lives now. It's like a suburb stuck in the middle of the ghetto. It's super funny if you she's were like, there now. Yeah, she's what is she there doing now. stuck in a suburb in the ghetto? She's retired. My sister's got two babies, and like, my nephews are the coolest little dudes ever. So, like, you know, they just she's doing the family thing out there. And, like, but that's another thing with that Midwest mindset, and especially in Akron. And I don't hold, I help don't, me out. What is a Midwest <clears throat> mindset? So there's this. I'm not trying to put you on the clock here. No, no, like, no, no. You it's know, cool. I'm just curious because I don't know. Let me break it down to you like this. And everybody from the Midwest might get pissed. But Disclaimer like, for everybody on here. Like, this is his perspective. This don't is my hometown. Go you know what yourself. I mean? Don't fuck with that. It's his perspective. Yeah, it's my perspective. So, like, there's this strange Midwest mindset where, like, people are totally fine with $35,000 a year and, like, a sh like, a shack and just having a kid and then doing the pattern that society calls normal i'm married by 28 but then fuck that didn't work because we got married at 28 and had a kid to stay together so now we're 32 and we have this divorce but i have this house and it's like this boom boom boom, boom compound effect Dude, i know exactly what you're talking about right now and it's kind of creeping me out everywhere essentially has that because that's kind of what society has said is kind of creeping me out dude but you even, just explained a creepy situation why was it creepy? slash that's a lot with all due respect like that's you're right oh yeah it's a generational almost even mindset i it's definitely a generational thing what's love have babies get married make your parents proud get a good job marry someone who you think you're supposed to marry right both my parents divorced. Just like, that's such a, it's a weird thing. Like, and I feel for like, you know, I gave, I give my dad shit all the time. Cause he's like, not nah, the greatest dad in my book. You know, we all have that, but like his dad wasn't a good dad. That's how he was raised. And I'm sure his dad wasn't a good dad. So that's how it was raised. And it's that, it's that whole mindset that gets engraved. And that's why they talk about ge uh, generational curses and things like that, you know? And I always think about that. Cause like, back then like the only thing to do in the midwest is drink and eat so everybody goes to the local watering hole gets shit faced and orders pizza i know and that and call it a weekend but guess what tomorrow's saturday let's fucking do it again baby yeah go to the upper oh, deck man. and we're fucking on the lake yeah like that's, that's texas man that's yeah. that's dallas fort worth broad like sweeping brush strokes of the south and there's and nothing with a man made with lake with a man made lake yeah driving our power boats around, doing some bitching shit with our bitching chicks, yep. drinking Rocky Mountain Curse Light and Bud Light. <laughs> Bush Light. And, yeah, exactly. Bush dude. <laughs> <laughs> and just fucking having a great time. I grew up in that, playing yeah. volleyball on the sand on the, on the side of the Trinity River, going out to the ski lake, doing the shit. You wouldn't change it's a it for the life. world, though, would you? I wouldn't have changed those experiences for anything. Did it, it was before the thing. military, did it after the military. It was great, dude. It's a beautiful thing growing up in that. Because I'm so lucky I didn't end up with kids and a wife. You ran around the streets, didn't you, growing up? I had that. so much fun. I had so much fun. I don't know how I made it out. That's how I, I think about that all the time. There's absolutely no reason why I should have survived Akron, Ohio. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. But as soon as I saw that window, man, I was fucking gone. Really? Yeah. I uh, knew my I entire life. I can see life. that. When was that? Um... Well, I, I literally always knew. I didn't know how or what, but I knew that it was going to happen. The opportunity would present itself that I would be able to get out of where I was because I knew for me it was very toxic. It was going to end one of two ways. Prison, kill. Because... 
that's what I was on route to do. I was going to sell drugs. I was going to do whatever I could to make money. It was mm. Cleveland, like, fuck bitches, get money. You know, like, sure. I was I was on that mindset of, like, I was young and stupid. And I was college dropout, so, like, that was there, too. And, like, I just knew. So, literally, I think it was 2013 or 14. Don't really quote me because my memory is super trippy. But I basically... We kind of talked about this a little bit. I'll present to you the story. So it was like 2013 or something like that. And one of my friends that I grew up with, I love them. It's Kara's family, shameless plug. They freaking raised me like no other. They're awesome family. So my best friend, Chase, has three sisters or two sisters and a mom. They all work together in hair salon. She invites me to a, a big hair show down in Columbus, Ohio. And I was like, shit. 10,000 girls down there. Let's go. I'll definitely go. She was like, yeah, you can use the, this pass and like come in, like come with us. And I was like, yeah, I'm about to do this. So let's go. How old were you when this was going down? Probably 25, 24. I was prime time, baby. Yeah. So I was, I was ready. And, uh, long story boring i go to this freaking show and i'm like this is so tight oh my god what am i doing with my life why have i not been here and like they're all looking at me because i'm the only you're making dude. me want to cut hair right now bro right <laughs> i was like what have i been doing with my life this whole time bro it's funny but yeah so i start walking around meeting all these people and then i start seeing these dudes that look like this now yeah. and like i'm like oh that dude's fucking blasted up there and tattoos he's up there with a bunch of girls he's just on stage like talking about hair and like doing whatever and <laughs> he's making six figures i'm like this dude's fucking tight I, this is cool all right cool so the owner of my uh school comes walking up and or one of the oh, ladies from the school comes walking up she's like you need to come to paul mitchell cleveland and check it out and i was like because so backstory a little bit do it. I was saying yes to everything the entire year. And I did. Literally. This was an intentional practice or what? 100% start of the year. I said yes to everything. Nothing is going to, nothing. Obviously some drugs I said no to and stuff like that. But right, like, right. there was some stuff you have to say no to. You got to be responsible ish. But there was so much stuff that was, I was so uncomfortable. And that again, being invited to the hair show, I was, I said, yes. Hmm. So then she Flash forward again at the hair show, she goes, hey, you need to come to Paul Mitchell Cleveland and check this thing out. And I was like, yes, I'll be there. So I go whatever day, show up. She's like, what do you think? I'm walking around, there's girls everywhere. They're all looking at me. Cause like, again, one straight dude out of like 113 people. Right. So my odds are pretty good. And good looking too. <laughs> mad decent, mad decent. Mad decent. So I'm walking around the school and I'm like, yeah, this is actually really tight. And um, I yeah, I'll come back and do a tour and like like really think about it. And so she's like, okay, well, do you want to sign up today? And I was like, Yeah. So I literally today, this day, I'm I've been suckling on this one. It's really been good. good. All right. So you need another? Mm-hmm. Yeah. One more? Yeah, I'll take one more. Two, please. Thank you, Dave. I want to try again this hopical citrus. So so she was like... Um, sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. I got distracted by the June shine. Yeah, no, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Um, they stock the fridge, dude. It's unbelievable. They can stock my belly. I don't want to steer off. Good. All right, so... Anyways. So you're at this show. She said, you got to come to Paul Mitchell. That's I said where. yes. Yeah. I go to the school. She's like, you want to sign up? And... Um, Thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, Dave. You are I the appreciate man. appreciate that. You are the man. So I'm like, yeah. Appreciate you. Whatever. Here's my loan for $25,000. Let me dot the line. What? Sign it. Sign up for school. I'm enrolled. Cool. Flash. Hair back. school is 25 grand? Now. It might even be more now. Damn, well, I don't know dude. now with the whole COVID thing, but Damn. I got a bomb ass education, bro. It was good. And it presented me with the opportunity to be where I'm at right now. Okay. So... I started like with the hair thing. You yeah. asked me, how the fuck did you start hair? Yeah, dude. So like, I went to college for biology, physical therapy in undergrad and psych. I was obsessed with the human mind and I did all four years, dropped out. Dad, mom, they were pretty pissed, but it wasn't right for me. I ended up getting a car accident. Like it was just a whole series of events that took me out of college. And I was like, this is not for me. Damn, dude. But, that's hard. That sounds harsh. It that was, sounds like a hard deck. 
to like a hard hand. It was heavy, dude. It was super heavy and it like, it totally shaped me into something like, it was weird because you know how you're talking about the progression of how we're constantly shifting. I had got to step outside the box because I was on freaking opiates for a whole year and because I broke my C1, broke seven ribs. From broke, the yeah, accident, you From mean? the accident, yeah, I got a car Damn, accident. bro, so you got twisted good in the accident. And I was in the ICU for, I think, like two weeks. Bro. Felt like three years. That's heavy. It was not. So like that whole series event was like, I was so turned off by being in a hospital and being a doctor, being a nurse and all that shit. And I Damn. was like, I don't want to do this. Damn. So your accident steered you in another direction from the medical field direction, which is kind of where you wanted to be because you were trying to score like everybody else back then. Absolutely. Right? Cause that's what dad and mom wanted. Yeah, be of a doctor, course. Be a lawyer, Damn. whatever that may yeah. be. Yeah. Damn. I'm sorry you had to go through that, dude. That's a that's a bad that's a bad hand. Good thing that there's 52 cards in the deck, huh? Yeah. You know, it's funny though. That bad hand was the best hand I've ever had in my entire life. Cuz it was going to end like I said with leaving Akron, dude. Like it was I was on that path, brother. Like I'm telling you, I was dead or in jail. And prior to that, I fuck, dude. Full disclosure, when we were um and I was in the accident. I was at the hospital and this cop comes up to me and he was like, is this your bag? Holds it up to me. The I had this bag. It was infamous. People knew how to find me. And <laughs> they said, look for Bob Marley. So they found him. And the cop was like, I found all your stuff, but it was all my prescriptions and stuff. But he was like, as I'm sitting there literally dying, he's like, oh, I'm going to charge you with all these drug charges and all this stuff. And I was like, you know in and out so it was like it was just the whole thing but like i was on the path so that accident was the best thing to change my fucking life dude it would it catapulted me like it was a really long cut recovery like it's now may 2nd will be um or may 6th i'm sorry will be 10 years next year since the accident yeah and i still can barely like bend over to tie my shoes someday so it's like little stuff like that but dude i'm telling you like had that not happened in my life, I wouldn't be as grateful as I am. Like, I remember the entire accident, bro. It was nuts. Like, I remember there was a cell phone on my knee. And as soon as that car hit us and we started rolling, I remember watching my phone float up. And and all I could think of right in that moment was like, I don't give a fuck what happens to me because I know how I've been living my life. Please protect everybody in this car. And after that, that was when I was dead. That was it. And then got life flighted to the airport and all that stuff. And then later found out the girl I was actually with at the time in the car, she was riding the front passenger. She had passed away. And this was like, again, you know, on the morphine and all this stuff, because this was coming right out of the hospital. I will never forget this is so gnarly to like say out loud, but like, whatever. Uh, I, I legit tried to drown myself in the hot tub. And my mom and my sister, I came out and they're like, God, like uh, I, like yeah. pulled me out and everything and it was like within that heavy ass moment dude everything changed like the gratitude for life was just like damn. then it never went away damn and how do you pull that in to manifestation at this point how do you connect that dot did you manifest all that crazy fucking shit that happens in our 20s no dude no no, but we did. Yeah. We made the choice, right? We, But we had no idea what we were doing as young folk. That's right. why in our 30s now, when we've become smart and wise and been through all this shit, we can even talk about the word manifestation and have it mean something. Yeah. We were all doing something wild and free and learning mm -hmm. because we're wild animals before we turn 22. Absolutely. My grandpappy used to always say, if you can get a if you can get a kid to live past twenty two, they're probably gonna be okay. Yeah. <laughs> but really. Yeah. And he had a run of the mill, let me tell you. I bet. Let me tell you. But my dude, you're I wanna say thank you for sharing all of that, dude. Yeah, I wasn't even planning on sharing that, but it just unfolded that way. But and all that and all that that hand you were dealt, or you 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 can look at it that way. Yeah. Or you can look at it as each moment was a manifestation of the next and the next and the next. Right. 
because I made all the decisions that day, you know, that if you want to look at it, oh, it could have been a manifest. No, it wasn't. Not in your conscious mind, though. That's just the mind, way the universe though. worked. That's, way how, that's how it was supposed to be. And I say this all the time, and I believe it to my core. Everything is exactly how it should be all the time. Then what are we doing trying to manifest things? Should we just allow it then? It's already done. Allow it to float? Yes, please. Let's get into that. It's Dude. already done. <laughs> Look how confident he was. I'm telling you, bro. It's literally already done. It's already written. I know we got different viewers and things, so we don't need to make it a Christian thing. We don't need to make it a universe, a crystal thing, nothing like that. I don't give a fuck who you worship, who whatever. I love that you do it. Just do I it. love that you do too. All just those do it people wholeheartedly that work, mean keep it. doing it, whatever it is. Absolutely. Just as long it. as it's not malicious and hateful and hurts people or children. That's all that matters. Or animals. That's all that matters. Okay. Literally. And? I lost. <laughs> right no, now. dude. And? So... You're talking it's about it's literally already written. Bro. It's already written. It's done. Like it's our story. There it's already done. We have like all we need to do is just keep going and wake up every day and be that happy and be that love and spread that shit. Because literally that's the only thing that's gonna save this fucked up nightmare that's happening right now. Is if people fucking put their dicks in their pants and just fucking zip it up. Listen, humbly, you disagree with this, I disagree with this, but we can meet in the middle. So with our life story, if when I say it's already written, I don't need to have these personal battles every single day. It's like when you get all worked up before you're about to, like my sailing lessons are tomorrow. I could be so nervous. Dude, you need to relax. You're going to have so much fun. Sailing lessons are the best. And let me what... tell you why you're going to walk in there and you're going to be like nonchalant about this shit. You're just going to be like, dang, you know what? My buddy Logan that I was sitting down with last night said that sailing was the best experience potentially that he's had in his younger years. And it defined his freedom and his connection with mother nature and his understanding of geometry and, and science. And it, it taught me how to be capable on water See, driven by mother nature. You're a water man. And my dude, like there's nothing to be in, like nothing to be intimidated by doing something new. Exactly. And but, why let that, that eagerness or that anxiety, whatever you want to call it of like, why freak yourself out? Why twice? Because it's going to happen. You got to do it. I got to take the lessons. Like, I'm going to be on that <laughs> fucking boat, bro. Like, what am I going to... I'm going to be freaked out right then in that moment. So why right now when I'm at peace with myself and living my best fucking life, would I want to <laughs> just torture myself thinking, I'm going to get hit by that fucking boom, bro? No, yeah, you just got to be aware. And if you get hit by the boom, just don't. Yeah. <laughs> just don't get hit by the boom. But if guess what? If I get hit by the boom... It's already written, bro. If you, I was supposed if you, to get hit you by don't that have boom. a good instructor if you get hit by the boom. I agree with that statement completely. And I hope Who are I, you? Can I'm we go into more detail about maybe don't say their name. Let's talk more about the process that got you onto this. I mean, did you find them on Craigslist or did you? The sailing thing? Yeah. It was Groupon. One of my friends said, Oh God, up. he's gonna die. Yeah, I know. I was like, this that's why I even said I was like, I'm gonna he's drown. About to I'm gonna drown. drown. I'm gonna drown. He's gonna drown. Let me put it this way. Put a life jacket around your neck and your body. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll and be you're fine. not gonna it's drown. Already yeah, yeah. It's already written. It's already written. It's already written. It's already written. It's so like the way this happened was when I was growing up, I had a friend, he passed away fucking love him cj novak was his name and his dad i told you the same weekend i discovered bob marley was the same weekend i discovered i love sailing because he used to take us out on his boat in lake erie up in cleveland and it was just so fucking cool he'd be like you know when the sail would go up and you're like whoa what the fuck this is cool now we're going this way and like it was just so cool and i've always been obviously every young man's dream is to be a pirate like come on let's go so like i just always wanted to hear captain ryan james sullivan Oh my god! <laughs> I thought it sounded so fucking cool. Did you need to start small, small boats and little sails? Yeah, I think I'm doing a 27 foot first. That's a big boat. That's a large boat. I would recommend a smaller boat, more like a two person boat, like a dinghy. <laughs> Much like a dinghy, that's where you really learn the essence of being connected to the water and being driven by wind power. So I got. I would like to take hours you, to figure this out. I would out. like to take you sailing. 
How would you like taking a lesson from an 11 year old that I trust? Oh my God, I would love nothing more. Dude, I love when kids teach shit because they are so fucking excited and they're kind of relentless in their teaching techniques most of the time. She will whip your ass into I shape. I'm certain of that. I love that. She's kicking all the dude's asses in the regatta races too. That doesn't surprise me. Man, it's bitching. Yeah. That's all right. Cool. So anyway, I'm so stoked. You're going to be on a 27th. You're going to be crewing. So that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be learning. You're actually going to observe, I hope, more than anything. And on a 27 or 37? I think the first day is 27. 27 foot boat. You're not going to be hit by the boom. That's a certainty. That's good. <laughs> on a small boat, it's erratic. It's volatile. And it moves really fast. Like not the, the not small ideal. dinghy you were talking about? Like a laser is my favorite boat to, to learn how to sail and teach people how to sail them because things move really fast. It's the one of the faster boats on the water, in my opinion. Is that the one like in Tommy Boy? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that might have been a mini boat. fish. <laughs> yeah. So that actually, I think, was a mini fish. So they have a mini fish and they have lasers. Lasers are slightly more steady than a mini fish. <laughs> and if I remember that scene, it was probably more like a mini fish because I think it was not fucking steady at all. That's how actually how I see myself <laughs> yeah, sailing yeah, all yeah. the time. <laughs> no, no, that's not that how it's going to work out, bro. <laughs> let me let me reel this in. I really do want to know how you got into hair. I know you talked to me about Paul Mitchell. I know how you talked to me about that was the kick, right? That was like the thing and then the wreck. But where does the sequence of events, how does the sun play help me? So when did you really get into hair? Literally, this is a true story. In high school, my friends used to call me hair as like a nickname. Bro, your hair is massive. It's now large it and in charge. It is. And I always had Liberty Spikes or some type of cool shit, but I always did it myself because I got a really fucked up haircut when I was like 14. I saved all my lunch money, bro. And I went and bought to Sally's and bought a pair of clippers. And then I started fucking up me and all my friends in the backyard. Oh, damn, bro. So I started doing it and then come, you know, high school wrestling team, what's the football team? We're all shaved mohawks. The next thing people are like, oh, dude, I, can you do a real haircut? And I'm like, I don't know if I go, let's try so tried it, and then college comes. So you're talking I'm, middle school, high school, college. Start you're fading. just cutting people's, everybody's hair. Baby, it was party money. That's how I saw it. I was like, you were you literally need... hustling haircuts. Oh yeah, out of the dorms in OU with my friends. Like my friends went to o Ohio University. And I remember I was doing haircuts like out of the dorms, wow. making money for beer and Jaeger. That's the, pretty cool, dude. <laughs> That's all I wanted. You're an entrepreneur, dude. I, yeah, I didn't know. Well, I always knew. My dad always said that too. He was like, "You're you're built for a business, man," and like all the shit. But like, yeah, it, it was just a hustle. I, it was fun. It made quick, good money. But I didn't know you could make yeah, yeah. this kind of money. Yeah, dude. And I didn't know that it could take me here. It's a total score. The service industry about making people pretty making people feel good that's it making people feel taken care of that's it connected to themselves a little further you know making them shaping helping shape them in a way that they think they need to look or makes them feel pretty man or makes them feel good I'll tell you what i've got to work with really wild people Hip hop artist, I'm not gonna say any names, like famous people that like A list celebrities, they're just like cool fucking people that anybody would be so quick to name drop. My favorite people I've ever worked with in my entire life are the homeless. Straight up. This happened two weeks ago when I brought Reese all those fucking snacks and everything. I went to Smart and Final and like picked up all these snacks for her in the new shop and everything. And just, she was so stoked. But so I'm walking out of the parking lot and I hear, hey, hey. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I like turn over and it's just one of the homeless ladies that I, transients, we'll call them. And uh, she goes, you're the guy who does that hair stuff. And I'm like, what? She's like, you're the guy who does all that hair stuff. And I was like, yeah, I do hair. And she's like, you cut my hair one time. Oh, and I, cool. I couldn't remember her. And it kind of but hurt me a little bit because I was sad that I didn't remember her. But she remembered me and the impact I made on her life. And she told me, she was like, the day you gave me a haircut, I had never felt more happy in my entire life. 
prior to being homeless. Damn. And that, like, dude, it shut me down. Like, I kept cool, and I was like, thank you. I'll see you. You know, kept it cool. But, like, that those... chokes chokes me, man. Chokes that's me a little bit. That's the shit that's tight, man. Like, I've been working with that nonprofit now for in Carlsbad. Excuse me. Shameless plug. Showers blessings. They don't pay me. It's a church thing, so whatever. Yeah. But basically, in Oceanside and Carlsbad, all the homeless come into this trailer, and it's got two portable showers in it. They load up on the showers. They get clean. They get new clothes. They get food, and then I cut their hair. Dude, it's so fucking cool. It's yeah. like the coolest thing ever. And like, what is it about her? What is it about her connection with that experience that made her say and feel that, dude? Because I don't know. Did you? I'm not trying to bring up. I just want to understand more about connection. I think about this a lot. You know this because we talk a lot about this and, you know, we're close. Uh, we talk about these things, but what is it, what is it that makes us feel that way to express that, to tell someone that's how we felt about it? Like it was a major thing to be taken, is it to be taken care of? Is it because you genuinely wanted to be with that person in that moment, regardless of if you were volunteering your time or making a donation or whatever, but you were connected with that person for a short period of time and whatever that was, it wasn't that you were giving and they were taking or vice versa. There's no real word for it, but you guys were in, in sync taking care to you know it's one one globe one earth yeah but many worlds 100 percent. we're all living in our own tiny world oh, and yeah. when worlds come together they're like these tiny little planets you know and they're organic and beautiful and twisted and all these little things going on as they have evolved and sometimes planets come together and create a universe for a little while, you know? And then they, I feel like they float off back into orbit. But some things may be left behind. This is a very, this is probably it. Uh, I'm going to rewatch this and think that this is a really geeky way to think about things. But I, like it. I do believe that we're all these sort of moving, evolving worlds among the earth. And when we come together, the energy from the worlds that we live in is connected in some way that's also we're on earth, connected to earth in some way. And sometimes when worlds come together or collide, it's like a wreck. Yeah, It's like a wreck that occurs, but beautiful outcomes Sometimes in her case, maybe it was not a wreck. Maybe it was this sort of meeting of the energy field for a little while to give her hope, to make her feel pretty, yeah. to make her feel taken care of, considered. Yeah. Even maybe it was just being considered, existing to someone. Dude, and that's exactly what the home, homeless community, it's so fucking crazy and it's so heavy. That's all they want is to be recognized. They don't need your fucking 10 cents. Well, obviously they might, but like they want- They gotta your, eat is what you mean. Yeah, they and what you're talking about with that gravity and the planets and the first thing- We I gotta can, eat. I don't mean they, like the homeless community. I'm saying we gotta eat. We need money. That's yeah. what he's saying. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, you're good. I like that you elaborate because I don't and then I get myself in trouble. <laughs> but it's like what Judgers. you're talking about with that planets, that gravity, that energy that brings those people together what we we're to go back with that it's already written it's already written that i was supposed to meet that person yeah. i already knew that i was supposed to have this connection and like totally honest like put it out there aloud for the first time ever like i know i could quit hair and just get a fucking van and put a sink in the back of it and drive around the country and do homeless hair and i would be way more fulfilled than i am doing Beverly Hills, Carl's bad blondies every fucking day of my life and getting $400 every hour or whatever the fuck it is. It doesn't matter about money. None of that shit money. It's about that, what you're talking about, that compassion they want to feel, that energy they want to feel, that connection that makes them feel like a human. Yeah. And they don't get it. And Blondie and Logan 
and the uh, beautiful transient woman. I don't know if that's the right proper terminology, folks. Okay, I don't know. Ryan used it, so I used it because I didn't want to use the name home, the terminology homeless, and I don't know. But they're they need <clears throat> they don't need. They are where they are. I could be that someday. I don't know. Right. And 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 I think about that way more often than I probably would like to admit, because. Because I'm not going to get into it. Well, dude, I, think about it. They are so much further away from where we are versus we are so much closer to being in that position than they are in ours. Think about the work you've put in to get to where you're at right now. Think about the work they put in to get where they were and now they're this. Exactly. Or that, or this, I'm or that. Or it the, takes two that. seconds, bro. It takes a fire or a cancer or something and that's truthfully what most of them deal with is like a va something or like or a knock on the head mental honestly illness, bro stuff it could like be that. let me tell you We're so close it to could take homeless, a knock dude. on the head we talked about it during my haircut yeah i was millimeters away from a clean knock on the head that could have changed it forever you know and I ended up getting cosmetic surgery so I could cover the scar, you know, because I could. But what a different life it could have been. And I'm not trying to degrade or or compare situations. I'm saying it was millimeters, if not less, uh, away from the right kind of knock on the head or the wrong kind of knock on the head. And that's just my situation. And I feel so fortunate, dude, I, to just be. That's exactly it, man. Just to be here. Think, I know this is a weird thing, but I always think of Kanye West when he got in his car accident and he mm -hmm. did through the wire. That set his whole career. He literally set his whole career. Yeah. Catapulted him into being who Kanye West was. He had a moment. <laughs> he had a moment is what you mean. Yeah. But within that darkness of, fuck, I'm in a car accident. I'm braced shut. I threw the wire. I'm rapping. Like, that darkness is what... Sure. So it's just, I don't know, like, I think back to the hair t subject, it's it's just so fulfilling to be able to, like, work with these. And I saw that window and I was like, fuck, dude, I got to jump. If I can get West Coast and start doing this, because I've been doing, it's like, it's not about Carl this like, it is, but, like, I've been doing homeless haircuts since I was in Ohio. Yeah. And it started out of my backpack, going up on a street corner, being like, yo, you need a haircut. I got stuff. I got an extension cord. Let's do this. You got to learn somewhere and they need a haircut what sounds like a perfect equation thank you so everything's good now though you're with a good program you're like working with good folks oh doing yeah the thing oh cool. yeah where can we find you right now i'm doing i'm back in the salon i'm doing hair i work at salon Adair. um where where what is it salon how can Adair. we get in touch with you in particular to get a haircut my instagram is ryan james does instagram is the one and only way you're going to get a hold of me instagram instagram all, all my right. friends have my numbers Nobody else does. I have his number. <laughs> He's got my number. And um, Instagram, Ryan James does. Basically, like, I'm doing hair. I do house calls. I do stuff for people. Yeah, he Dirt. does. He comes and cuts my, he cut my hair today. If you I guys do. are lucky, you get yeah. a little clip of that. And then he put beginning. a hat on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sin. No, no it's playing. not a sin, it's dude. I, I was. You got to get your vibe. Yeah. And with the white backdrop, the new painting, Dave. That yeah, I know. Dave is killing it. This new backdrop is dope dude i'm not gonna lie to you it's really tripping my eyeballs out what is this one the here? backdrop with you like i'm, I'm wearing like, a hawaiian shirt and in, in front of some like super <laughs> what is it what is it super um abstracts trippy? like trippy yeah let's look at it a little harder later yeah i like that but my um, dude we can find you on instagram and you are working where I work at Salon Adair in Carlsbad. In Carlsbad. I was talking to my home girl yesterday. We have we share birthdays. She's in Carlsbad. Happy birthday. I shouldn't say this on here. But anyway, she's a nice lady. She has a salon in Carlsbad in, on State Street. And she was sharing how, uh, you know, the whole uh, situation with the pandemic affected her business. And we're, we're quite close, actually. A lot she of salons. She was close by here. And they made it. And they did more than just made it. Like, she... She, I have so much respect for her, but 
in that entire industry that you're in. And I am not going to lie. I have a connection with you whenever I get haircuts and, you know, I feel, um, you know, to maintain oneself, uh, my buddy, Stuart champion, who, you know, cuts his own hair <laughs> because he's just like a caveman. He's the man. Yeah. He's a total fucking caveman. But, um, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate the time spent with you. I appreciated the time spent with my uh, previous uh, friend that used to uh, cut my hair as well. And there's a lot of conversations that happen during that process. There's, there's a dialogue between folks and, and, and it's something that happens on a regular basis. I've literally watched people's lives unfold over the years, have kids, have marriages, have divorces. I know everything before even their significant others do. That's creepy. It's so awesome. It's awesome. It's the trust level there. That's why I do that. Like to be able to communicate with people and like have those vulnerable moments with people. Cause if, as men, bro, we don't get vulnerable. We don't do that. We don't get vulnerable. So like all my guys in my chair, they let it up. Yeah. And that's tight. I like that. I because like that you're I vulnerable. I try to get that out yeah, of Yeah, I know you do. You get that out of me too, you little booger face. It works, baby. <laughs> well, Ryan, I'm going to say cheers, dude. It's been good to have you on the show. Dude, it's been great. You, you.